Okay, my friends, this is going to be a shocker du jour. This is near Monument Valley. No explanations about its how it happened. And there's a lot of conjecture on how this is impossible, but it's here. There is no question about that. So, who can explain it? Mud Fossil University. Okay, my friends, this is uh, outstanding. This is from Outer Range. And it says, I found impossible geometry while flying my drone. And he's standing at the side of this cliff. And he doesn't see it. It's nothing too big. He's going to be looking at this and up above what's going on. As soon as he starts his drone off, he freaks out. As crazy as this does sound, and I know it sounds crazy, this is the same as that. You see like these big layers here? You see a big layer here? And you got all these tiny little ones here. You see all these little tiny ones here? It's just the way it is. That's how membranes are constructed. And they have these layers of um, vein blood and artery blood, so the black and the red. And then that's why you see the black repels the red, so the red is in between two layers of black. They come up here and they start scratching on there and making their petroglyphs or whatever they call them. They're everywhere, because they, it, it's going to be a slick of black, which is the vein blood, almost everywhere. And it is a very thin slick, like up here, see? In the microscope, I have one there. That's a, that's a bone. That's from a bone. That's the bone foramen, they call it, a little hole that lets stuff inside the bone. But this is just the stuff that's laying on the outside, on top of that red. Just like it is down here, look. There's just no difference. A little difference in size. But I have hundreds of different shots of, um, of rock. I've, I've, I've done this for 15 years. I've, I'm telling you, what I'm showing you, I'm not making it up, and there's no way to discount it. We need to discuss it. Okay, as I have shown you, or certainly will, this landscape is, um, is not understood, and, and nobody is denying that. They just can't understand it. How did this happen? Well, I think I can show clearly how it happened. All right, this is excellent work done by a, a channel here called Outer Range. See, Outer Range. Whoops. Now, this is how they explain what they're investigating here. He went out in the American Southwest to search for Pueblo history. So he took his drone out there, and he's looking for these ancient petroglyphs and things like that to indicate what did these people think? What, what, what were they talking about? You know, thinking about it or whatever. They're drawing something. Does it mean anything? Well, it has to mean something. So he says, well, flying my drone over a rugged cliff near Monument Valley, I discovered a geological formation so precise it seemed impossible. As a ge geological formation, it is impossible. Giant earth blocks and geometric shapes carved into the land. At first glance, they defy all logic. The logic we were taught, yes. Are these a result of intelligent design, a rare geological process, or is there something stranger happening here? Well, let's go with number five or whatever that was. <laughs> All right, well, let's just go with the option that says something stranger is happening here. And what's strange about this? Well, I don't see that in my backyard. Look at that. Total. And you got these big lumps over here. What are they? Straight lines? Matrix of squares? Nobody, nobody did that. Nobody went out there and carved this. Just think about what just think just logically think about that. Now, in addition to that, I can show layers of tissue that are virtually identical. You see that coloration there? You see that coloration there? That coloration there? This is going to have the same thing. It's going to have layers and layers of different colored fluids. These are all fluids. I mean, they're not fluid fluid. They're porous tissue filled with different chemistry that creates different colors. Blacks, reds, 
the white, and, and some places they're all kinds of different colors, because transition metals are all kind of different colors, and they move through the blood and the, the fluids of a creature's body. It's what they do, they're transition metals. All right, so you saw that, those little blocky things. Well, guess what they are? They're a ponderosis tendon. It's right there. That's the stuff that girdles you, basically. Your back, your shoulders. It's, 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 the, it's a flat sheet of tendon. And they're all tiny little blocks. Tiny, and I'll show you. And where you see that steep drops off, drop-offs, that's this kind of an area here, where it goes from the red tissue into the white, which is the aponeurosis tendon. Creatures, I can't, I cannot give you an explanation of how they could have lived on this earth. So they seem to be have been everywhere, and I think the earth is those creatures at some point, all the way down to the bowels of the beast, so to speak. Now, you know, they say tendon versus aponeurosis. Well, aponeurosis is, is a tendon, too, as far as I'm concerned. This is the definition, tendon or whitish connective tissue in a tough cord. This is the same stuff, connective tissue, in a delicate sheath. And it has to be able to move and do all those kind of things. One's rope-like, and the other is a sheath. Tough. The other one's delicate. It's a, it keeps you together like a, like a girdle almost. Function allows the body to move and be flexible. Allows the body to be strong and stable. It holds you together. So, you, all right, injuries much more common because you're pulling bone against muscle. Injuries less common, but you can get a good pop and that hurts. And what happens is one of those aponeurosis tendons pops right out of its socket. They're little balls. Basically, they built most of those walls down in Peru and Bolivia and all that out of aponeurosis tendon, which all that is. Now, what are these bumps? You see them all over the place. Well, what are these little squares? I showed you those little squares with the guy flying his drone over the top of that landscape. That's how big these creatures were. These are little tiny things compared to how big they were, although this is absolutely enormous. Because in us, that would be, you wouldn't even be able to put a piece of paper in that thickness. It's just tiny. These are little straps that run from there down and lock in and allow this thing to pull against these straps. And that's snapped right off, and you can see right in, you see it? You see all the blocks, first of all. And this one over here, you see, it still has the, the tube running in where they all have like a little central core. And I, all I can determine from this is that this was a test wall to see the best way to use these slabs of tendon. That's all, that's all I can come up with. If you can think of a different, this one's scraped down to nothing, this one's scraped down to where it's almost like this, but I don't know, I don't know. This is so much to study now. A lot of stuff has just been, just never even looked into, first of all. Secondly, a lot of stuff was looked into and it's just they can't figure it out, so they just go somewhere else. I think we can figure this out, but what does it mean? It means we live in a in a universe of biology, and which that's just a whole other realm to investigate. Well, what does that mean to us, to our eternity, to our life, to the way we live our life today? This is deep stuff, man. You know, something I found extremely interesting was he put a date on there somewhere that this appears to date back to around 1500 B.C. That is exactly what Velikovsky said was when the Great Flood happened and we almost got hit by Venus, which destroyed all the giants that were on the Earth. This is giant stuff. I don't care how you... There's nobody that can stand up to the fact that that is biology. It's biology. That's not accidental. Somebody went out there. Even how, who, how, show me the guy that's big enough to do that. 
this is not ever been examined. It's time to change that. This, this is, is significant. This is not just, oh, look at that, isn't that something? Well, yes, it is, but it's a hell of a lot more than something. <laughs> we, we just never considered it. I mean, like even these walls. My friend uh, Pete sent me this. I've been talking about this Hunstanton, Hunstanton Beach, where they, they have that skin, and that's flesh, and these are all the balls that are in the flesh. And they erode down, and it just turns into mud. The flesh turns into mud, and the balls turn into be stones. And what is happening is there's there's a, a certain type of moss or whatever it is that's growing on there. They can grow on there, and it's going to eat those walls until until they turn into like this. This is the same place, Huntington Beach. All right, there's some kind of moss or whatever growing on there. That's not a stromatolite just all of a sudden popped out of nowhere. Absolutely not. They're coming out of these walls. And in the desert, it's like this. The Moki Marbles. That was skin. This is skin, too. Only these balls are a little smaller than this one. But this was probably the upper layer of skin. There was some kind of an organ there or something that didn't erode like the rest. This stuff at the bottom is nothing more than the basement layer of skin. And your skin floats like this, and here's what it looks like in you, right here. That could let you do all these kind of things and come back to where it's supposed to be. But they all ride on a basement layer, which is tough. And this is basically what it looks like in your body. So I, the things I'm showing are are completely valid. If somebody can stand up and say, "Oh no, Roger, you're wrong because of this, that, and the other thing," well, stand up, tell me. I'm showing this right here. This is that's just nothing more than this. This guy was in an area where he didn't die quite so flat. You see all the layers here. There's something curved on this one. I think this was from a lung. I'm not sure. I, I mean, there's so much to investigate on this. Look at this. All right, so I, I don't know where I can go any further with this, but even these walls, those are all made out of tendon. This is a ponderosa, uh, not a pon this is rope's tendon. This is the same tendon from an Achilles tendon. I think this is an Achilles tendon. And they cut slabs out of here and built walls out of them. just what happened and there's all evidence is everywhere it shows all the cuts in them and everything so if anybody wants to say Roger you're not right you're saying things that aren't true well let's talk about it. let's have a discussion let's have a big platform I can't do this I'm not good at any of that stuff I know how to work with material evidence and this is what I'm presenting and I'd like to have it presented because this makes a big difference on everything. And it's very, very difficult to get this information in front of people uh, for a variety of reasons. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. So anyway, Mud Fossil University on YouTube. I'm obviously going to just keep going and doing what I'm doing, trying to expand brains. <laughs> There's so much, and, and, and all the things that we're seeing here, preserved, in my opinion, during the Great Flood, and it may not be true, that may have been preserved way earlier than the Great Flood, I don't know, because I have a hard time believing that all of these giant creatures were here only 3,700 years ago, it doesn't make sense. These have to be from long before that. And then the giants, there was giants in the earth in those days. And then after that, there was more giants. That's the deal. These were the giants that were in the earth in those days. They were the earth. All I can say is what was written and what the evidence supports. And we haven't looked at this as having any possibility of validity, really. 
You know, they talk about a giant 12 feet tall or something. That's silly. Like even dinosaurs. Oh, a giant dinosaur. A dinosaur wouldn't even be a parasite on the creatures we're talking about. A dinosaur would be walking through here just like walking inside of your flesh. They'd be able to drift around inside your your fluids in your body. I'm serious. Is it a blue whale? Go, no problem going through a person's body or a giant's body of this size. Just think about it. So we, how much thinking do we have to do? I guess I'm going to leave it at that. I don't mean to beat up, beat up on you, but it's very, very difficult to do this for 15 years and be be ignored and dismissed by the ones that should be they're the ones charging you to teach you what to say about your our, our world and geology how we should treat the earth how we should understand what's going on they don't understand it at all they just they i'm not kidding you sorry to say that's just a fact love y'all okay my friends again this is the aponorosis tendon where it gets right into the red muscle is where it just drops right off. Now, so this is the aponeurosis, and it is that fine sheet like. This is what it looks like in the human body. You have this sheet, it's just a flat sheet, and there's a, a rope like tendon that comes down to a ball. You see it coming down to that ball? Through that, right through this, it goes right through the tendon and it anchors down below. This is an injury that's pulled out. You remember how I said it's, it's delicate and there are not many injuries? That's an injury. They don't normally do that, but that's an injury. Now, let me show you what this looks like when you get it into the size of the creatures we're talking about. Because this is what Arches National Park is it's a tendon. In this particular case, the flesh should have been right to there. That should have been anchored right in. And this whole thing should have been here. Now, these are much tougher, the balls and the straps, basically, than the flesh. So the flesh eroded from here. For some reason, it just eroded away, and it left the ball in place with the straps still intact. Straps are not as tough as the ball. You see these balls all over? That's the ball. There's a ball right there. You see? And they have these iron banded breaks in them a lot of times. You see all the little layers? That's iron banding in there. Anyway, this there was another one right here. That's the central core, and I believe that one probably came down to here, maybe to here, I don't know. But that's, that's the size of the things we're talking about. And in us, you need a very good microscope to see that. Everybody's seen the walls. Some are just gigantic. And look at how perfectly they did it. These were moist when they did this. They had to be. Absolutely had to be. And they cut them in slabs. And they had machines. They had equipment. And these are the bumps that's sticking off. They left them. Because I guess they, they decided it was the best way to leave them just bumped off. Remember I showed you, I think this is a test wall. That's all I can say. There's so much to, to re-search now. Because the searching they did before, oh, no, no, no. and it was all done because there was no explanations. You don't have an explanation, you know, and you still want to be the expert. Well, you don't talk. <laughs> it shows they they have equipment tracks down there in Bolivia, all kinds of stuff. I don't want to keep going on and on because I could take days doing, which I have. I've been doing this. I have thousands of videos about this, and this is it, it's hard to get people to pay attention. That's all I can say. All right, I love you all. Just uh, start talking about this because it, it really makes a big difference to our entire life. We're just walking around not understanding. I mean, I don't know if people like that. Ignorance is bliss. I guess they do. Because that's what I found. Is you found, no, 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 I'm happy where I am. Don't. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks anyway. Bye.